Hello friends, this video on metal and non-metal part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 12. Now we have learned ionic compounds. Let's uh, learn the property of ionic compounds. Ionic compounds are solid and they are somewhat hard. They are solid and hard. Why? Because they have this uh, bond, right? They have this ionic bond and ionic bonds are very strong. The intermolecular force is very strong because it's all the force between positive and negative charge, right? So the force is more strong. So maybe uh, you'll understand more in, in the terms of physics where you say that the force between charge and all the coulombs and all. You will, when you learn physics, you'll understand more on uh, the force that acts between two charge or two opposite charge. That's why the force is very strong and they're solid and generally hard. And the melting and boiling point is very high for this. Ionic compounds are very high in melting and boiling point for the same reason actually. The solubility, they are generally soluble in water and insoluble in other solvents such as kerosene and metal. The reason I told you is same. You have this NaCl, for example, this is an ionic compound Na plus and Cl minus. When you put in kerosene, this guy is having no reason to break because kerosene is just a kerosene. It is not charged. It is not having a charged kind of molecule, right? In petrol also, it will not dissolve because if you see, uh, petrol is also not polarized. But if you talk about water, you talk about water molecule, this guy is slightly positive, this guy is slightly negative. So the water molecule itself has a positive and negative charge. So since if you see ionic compounds are very hard and has high melting and boiling point, but the charge can break charge, right? Because the whole thing, the high melting point, the high boiling point, the hardness, the solidness is all because of the charge. Charge can break charge. The moment it is all in water, water has charge, right? Water has charge in it. And this charge can nullify or break this charge. So with this charge, the moment it is all in water, this Na plus wants to go through this oxygen and this chlorine wants to go hydrogen and just break because of the charge. So water is a special case where water is has this H plus and over minus ion and these are the like, you know, this is positive, this is negative and that's the reason why it dissolves in water but doesn't dissolve in kerosene and all because they don't have this kind of thing, right? They don't have this plus or minus kind of uh, thing in the kerosene and petrol. They don't dissolve. Conductivity of electricity, ionic compound, they don't conduct electric in solid state but when they are dissolved in water, they conduct electricity, I told because NaCl they are very happy together, right? They don't bother about the electrons. They, they are not, uh, when any electro, extra electron come, they are not bothered, they at least bother about that. But moment it dissolves this water, it becomes Na plus Cl minus, Na plus Cl minus. Why? Because the water is like this. It has got H2O and this has hydrogen plus, slightly plus, oxygen is slightly negative. So it dissolves. Now since this dissolve, dissolve ions. When extra electron comes, it has a carrier. It has a carrier to pass electricity, right? So that's why ionic compounds, when solid, they don't, they don't connect electricity. For example, you take solid salt, you take salt, and you put this uh, two um, wires, and you put this battery, so you put the bulb. Right? It is all solid, solid salt, solid salt, right? There's no water. It won't glow. But the moment you put water in this, you will feel that you'll see that is Na plus and Cl minus ions are freighted. And these ions will now help in conduction of electricity. And thus, ionic compounds are special case where when they are solid, when they are in solid state, they don't conduct electricity. But when they are in molten state or when they dissolve in water, they conduct electricity. Now we'll do some activity on this ionic compound. So we'll take some samples of ionic compounds such as sodium chloride, potassium this, barium chloride or any salt which we get in the lab, which is ionic. And we'll observe the physical state. We'll see that all are solids. So solid. Now we'll take some small amount of this and burn it. We'll observe that there is no flame. There is no flame color. There is no color. Why? Because they are so strong. They have such a high boiling point that there is no flame. They are so strong. The electrovalent force between them is so strong that it won't even melt. It won't melt. It won't melt. Right? Also. We'll try to dissolve this in water. It will dissolve, yes, because water is a special case as I discussed. It won't dissolve in petrol, it won't dissolve in kerosene. Correct. Now, we'll uh, put this uh, solution, water solution, 
and some salt for example NaCl and we'll try to connect in this fashion we'll put some two uh, uh, metals here and we'll add this battery and we'll see the bulb glows a bulb glows that means sodium chloride solution is conducting electricity that is there is Na plus ions Cl minus ions Na plus ion Cl minus ion. that means it conducts electricity also what you can do is you can take in this plate in this plate you can put uh, sodium chloride salt like this all salt no water all salt you put one node like this one node like this and then put the battery here and put the bulb here right this is the bulb this bulb won't glow why because this, this is sodium chloride but still it won't conduct electricity why it is not in the solution state because in, if it's not in solution state it won't have free sodium and chlorine ions in this case it has free sodium and chlorine ions it does dissolve in water correct and in that case it conduct electricity in this case it won't conduct electricity again a question time write the electro dot structure for sodium oxygen and magnesium show the formation of Na2O MgO by transfer electron and what are the ions present in this compound so sodium we know is 281 that means sodium has one electron oxygen is 8 that is 2 and 6 that means oxygen has 6 electrons magnesium is 12 that is 282 that is magnesium will have 2 electrons this part is done so the formation of Na2, sodium is ready to give one electron, oxygen is ready to take two electrons, right? So that means two sodium items are required to give one electron each. And oxygen is ready to take two electrons, right? So one electron from this sodium, one electron from this sodium. So in this case, if you see, sodium got a positive charge and there are two sodium and oxygen got a two negative charge because it got two electrons. So if you see this is the formula Na plus one two because one positive charge on sodium and there are two sodium so it's two oxygen there are two negative charge on oxygen and there is one oxygen atom so this is Na2. Similarly MgO will say magnesium magnesium has uh, two extra and oxygen needs two extra so these two will go here. So what will happen? Mg will get two positive charge and no extra electrons there and oxygen will have six its own and two extra from magnesium it will get two negative charge and there is only one oxygen there. This is my MgO and this is my Na2O. What are the ions present in this compound? So in this compound if you see in this case I have my first case I have sodium ion and oxygen ion in this case uh, I have my Mg plus 2 ion and oxygen minus 2 ion correct so sodium and oxygen and magnesium ions are the ions which are involved in these correct why do ionic compounds have higher melting points we know that ionic bonds are very strong bonds right because it's all positive and negative charge bond and they have a very huge force of attraction and positive negative charge right they are very strong and thus the ionic compounds have very high melting thank you visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again